Hello, my name is Ed Frawley. I own Learbird. I'm going to talk a little bit about the new online course that I just finished producing titled uh, Remote Collar Training for the Pet Owner. Before I get into it, I've got to maybe talk a little bit about where I'm coming from with remote collars, and that is I bought my first remote collar in 1978. It was a Tritronics Pro 100 that I paid $1,000 for back then. The Pro 100 only had five levels of stimulation. Quite frankly, it was, it was the Model T of remote collars. It was pretty rough. We didn't know how to train with them. We did a lot of experimenting with them. I used it for a few years and quite frankly, I put it away because I wasn't happy with the results that I had. I didn't know, quite frankly, no one knew back then how to really train with a remote collar. It was all done with avoidance training. We'll talk about that in this course. So I put it away. And then in the 1990s, the manufacturers started to come out with collars that were very, had a, a number of different levels of stimulation. The collars today have 100 to 127 levels of stimulation. So in 19, or in 2008, I produced my first DVD by the same name, Remote Collar Training for the Pet Owner. Quite frankly, when I look at it today, it too was a Model T Ford of how to train pets with remote collars. I feel the online course that I have here today is as good as it gets. It's something that we're very proud of here at Learbird. It has five different modules. Each of those modules is divided up into segments. And I'll quickly run through it, but if you look at the front page or the course overview, you're going to see an outline of what's in this course. Module one is titled the introduction to the course. That module is divided up into three different segments. Segment one just begins by telling you a little bit about myself, the fact that I've been seriously training dogs for 55 years, that I've owned a, a remote collar since 1978. Uh, I talk a little bit about it because I just think it's important that people understand who they should listen to when they're considering training their dog with a remote collar. I have a lot of experience with that. In segment two, I talk a little bit about the history of remote collars. I talk about how I started and bought my first collar in 1978 and some of the issues I had when I first started that because of the type of collars we were forced to use back then. I talk about how I put the collars away for 15 years and didn't want to fool with them because I didn't like what we were doing with those old collars that I compared to a Model T Ford. Collars changed in the 1990s and we talk about that. And we talk about how we got to the point where we are today, where we're training with low level stimulation and in a lot of cases, levels that humans can't even feel. Remote collars have a terrible reputation because they're used incorrectly from folks that just don't know how to train with them. That's all going to be put aside in this course was we are going to show you how to train with them. We talk about the prerequisites for where you should be in your training program before you introduce remote collars into training with your dog. And that's so important because a lot of people, when they start training with the dog, get a remote collar when they're frustrated with a dog that doesn't come, a dog that acts inappropriately, and they get a remote collar. And then later in this course, we're going to talk about a remote collar is not a bigger hammer. It's not a bigger stick. There is a time when remote collars should be factored into a training program. And I talk there about what you should have already done with your dog. Number one, go through basic dog obedience. I have a course on that. Number two, go through the intermediate dog obedience that I have a course on, because these other courses all build upon themselves until you get to this advanced training with a remote collar. And we talk about exactly when you should start to train with a remote collar. In module two, it's titled selecting your remote collar. Now, a lot of people, who buy this online course or the DVD have already purchased a remote collar. I'd like to say that you could skip this section. I don't think you can skip the whole 
module, but there are parts of it that you can. There are a number of segments within module two. The first is terminology, because there's a lot of, in dog training, <laughs> in general, but in remote collar training specifically, there's a lot of terms that we use when we talk about training with a remote collar that the average pet owner has never heard before. So I go through all those terms in segment one. In segment two, I talk about the features that I think are important to pet dog owners. There's a pitfall for pet dog owners in trying to pick their own collar. Uh, there are certain features that are very important for pet dog owners. There's also features that are offered on remote collars that are, quite frankly, Ill irrelevant. Some of these collars on the market today are so complicated that even for me, I had to study it for a long time to figure out and remember what's this button for, how do we program this, yada, yada, yada. And it's all not necessary for pet dog owners. We want to keep it simple easy to understand so that when the time comes for you to use the remote collar in your training, it's, it's second nature to you. And if you have the right collar to start with, you can do that. We have a section in here on two of the brands that we sell. I don't try and sell every brand on the market. A number of them I don't want anything to do with because of service problems. There are collars on the market that don't have enough levels of stimulation to allow you to train low level stimulation the way we want to train it. When we train, a lot of times you're going to see in level four and, or in module four and module five, we're training at levels that humans can't even feel. Not all dogs, but more than you would think. And if some of these remote collars like I won't name the name. Uh, you can go to Ask Cindy and ask, but there's a collar that we just stopped selling that only had 16 levels of stimulation. That's not enough levels. The collars that we use have between 100, 0 and 100, 0 and 127, and even at that spread, there are dogs that can tell the difference between level 13 and level 14, or level 12 and level 13. That's important to us. It's very important. So we're going to talk about that. There are also, there's also an, a, a segment for aftermarket straps. Every remote collar that you buy has a strap on it. But there are other options for aftermarket straps that make it easier to put the collar on and take it off. They're not buckle collars. They're snap collars, and there's different types. So I go into those. I show you what we have. And then it's up to you whether you want to do it or not. We have a segment in this module on how to charge your collar. That's really important. Your average manufacturer is going to tell you that the batteries that are in your collar, the rechargeable batteries that are in your collar will last three years, four years, five years, six years, depending upon how well you take care of them. So we spend a lot of time within that segment talking about how to charge the collar, how often to charge the collar, and there's even part of that segment that deals with how to change the batteries three years from now should a battery fail on you. And we offer uh, batteries for all the collars that we do sell. And then finally, there's a segment on no bark collars versus remote collars. And we go into detail there because we're not a big fan of no bark collars. We sell a lot of them. There are people that absolutely need to have no bark collars. People that live in apartments can't have their dogs barking all day when they're at work. People that have to leave their dog outside in a dog kennel and they live in a community that uh, doesn't allow barking dogs, they have to control that dog barking when they're gone. Those are people that need to have no bark collars. They don't have, a job, they don't have an option. But dogs that have been conditioned to a no bark collar have to approach training with a remote collar a little differently. And a lot of people say, well, if I have a remote collar, do I really need a no bark collar? We address that in this segment too. So module two is an important module for this course. There's a lot of information in here. In module three, which is titled Habituating Our Dog to the Remote Collar, we have two segments. The first segment is to teach you how to put the remote collar on 
where the collar should be on the dog's neck, how tight the collar should be on the dog's neck. It's a very important thing because a lot of people that don't pay attention to details do this incorrectly. And if you don't have the collar on correctly, you're not gonna be able to use it when you need it. So we're gonna show you how to do that. The second segment is how to habituate your dog to wearing the receiver on its neck. And that's really, really important. The reason it's important is we don't want to end up with what we call a collar-wise dog. What is that? That's a dog that knows when we put a remote collar on, it's time to mind. We have to work our way around that. In the beginning, the foundation for not having a collar-wise dog begins with correctly habituating your dog to wearing the collar. We want our remote collar to be part of our dog's life. In module four, which is titled Determining Your Dog's Stimulation Level, we have it divided up into three different segments. The first is test the remote collar on yourself. The second is introduce your dog to the feeling of stimulation. And the third is determining your dog's working level of stimulation. Now in segment one, we recommend that everybody that trains with a remote collar Put the remote collar in the beginning on themselves. Start at level two, then go to level four, then level six, looking for the point where they just start to feel stimulation. It's important in my mind that everybody understands that working with low level stimulation doesn't hurt our dog and it doesn't hurt people at all. Uh, we had, I don't know, seven Learberg employees, eight Learberg employees that we did this. We filmed them, and most of them were volunteers, but a couple of them had to be conscripts because they were very nervous about doing it. They didn't want to do it, and actually, it was good that we had that because they saw that when we do this, it doesn't hurt them. In uh, segment two, we title that Introducing Our Dog to Stimulation. And it's important to take a dog, I think it's just as important to take a dog through the work that we're gonna show in this segment so that the dog understands that stimulation doesn't hurt them, it feels different, and we're gonna introduce them to the feeling of low level stimulation so that they don't, I don't know if the word panic is the correct word, uh, or startle, I don't even think that's the correct word. So that they are just relaxed and they understand what the feeling is when we do it during training. Module five is titled Training with a Remote Collar. It's made up of a number of segments. Uh, the first of which is how to pair or layer a leash pop with a remote collar. Keep in mind, we've already gone through uh, habituating your dog to wearing the collar. We have gone through the segment on introducing our dog to the feeling of stimulation. And we've gone through the determining your dog's working level. Now, we're going to apply that information in module five. One of the segments after the pairing the leash to the remote is how to sit down and recall. Uh, and the, the next segment after that is the bed command. Probably the two most useful commands that we can help pet dog trainers with is the recall and go get on your bed when, you t when we want you to get on the bed. We cover that in detail here. We also have a segment on walking with your dog to pair loose leash walking with a remote collar. We have a segment on teaching your dog to spit out whatever he picks up in his mouth. I call it leave it or yuck. And we go through why that's important. And I'll be very honest that if we're out for a walk with our dog and it picks up a dead frog or a dead bird, we don't want them to eat that. So they have to spit it out when we tell them. We tell you and teach you how to, how to use a remote collar in that scenario. We do have a segment on dog aggression and remote collars. And I'm gonna be very honest right in the course overview that this is a subject that is beyond the level of pet dog trainers. The reason I say that is there are so many reasons for dogs to get aggressive. And if a remote collar is used incorrectly with a lot of dogs, 
it can result in a dog redirecting aggression back on either the handler or redirecting aggression into a person that that dog is being aggressive towards. We talk about that in this module, but we also say we're not going to talk to you or we're not going to teach you how to use a remote collar on dog aggression. It's just too dangerous. Um, a lot of people that have dogs that they think are aggressive when they're out walking them with a leash. They're not really aggression. It's not really an aggression issue. It's more of a, a reactivity issue with the dogs. And we talk in this segment of what Learberg has to offer for reactivity uh, with dogs that are out on walks.